Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. And today, we are going to be launching something to the moon for our first ever landing procedure. Just going to do a few moonar excursions today. And hopefully come back alive in one piece and retrieve a lot of science to um, further our tech. And you can basically see me struggling here a little bit, trying to fly the solid rocket booster into space. And yeah, we're going to jettison those now, and now we actually have some control. Because now we're switching over to our liquid engine. This is all um, post-edited 4 times time acceleration. Most launches will be that. And right now we're about halfway through our fuel in the um, third stage using our liquid engine. And it's enough to get us in, or barely get us into orbit, and now we complete the orbit. So we're going to make a good estimate on how to get to the, or how to get to the moon, yeah. But I think we can make it there in one shot. I'm not sure. We did last time. This would be so much easier with maneuver nodes. Trying to get to Duna or Eve would be a nightmare, but I think I might be able to do it with the moon. So we're just trying to make an educated guess here. I, um, burn at an angle. I feel like this is a, a good angle, but not sure. I, I might be behind a little bit, but I'm go just going to go for it. Raising our Apple apps all the way to the moon's orbit. And, oh, we got a contract there. I don't know what that was. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I have a Kerbin science mission that someone wanted me to do. So that was some extra funds for our next mission. So right now you may be asking why I didn't send up a bigger rocket or a more complex lander to the moon so I could um, for sure be able to come back. Well, you see, my VAB, my vehicle assembly building, is not upgraded yet. So I can't build more than 30 parts onto one rocket. That's why I have to use solid rocket boosters so often. Now I'm hoping that we can get um, an upgrade for that this episode. I'm not really sure. I didn't, haven't seen any good contracts. But... Um, so yeah, we missed the moon there, so we're just going to kind of circle around like a noob, and hopefully come into contact with it after a few weeks of blindly circling the Kerbin. Eventually we'll get there, no worries. It's not like we have life support or anything, and actually, it might be that this, uh, going to cut it close here. Um, yep, there we go. Barely um, scathing uh, the moon's sphere of influence, but we're here anyway. And that means that we can land or start our landing procedure. So we're just going to time accelerate here because I did a long burn to get into orbit. And I'm just going to come down over there and I'm going to land on the light side today. Whenever I land on a planet or fly in general, I'm going to try to go on the light side because it's just so much easier to see, obviously. Unless, um, for some other reasons, I will most likely, um, land and dock on the light side. So this, in fact, is in fact the first time the Kerbals are getting close to the surface of the moon. Coming down here, Jebediah Kerman is, well, he's, li he's actually freaking out, I don't know what that's about. Usually he's happy. But we're going to start a little bit of a long burn here as we journey down to the surface. And all the spots around us seem to be flat, so I'm not worried about a landing spot. It might be like a little bit of an angled crater or um, surface, but I don't really care. Our lander's pretty small. It won't get damaged. I could probably land this without any landing legs on it, to be honest. So now we're just um, in a vertical descent. Just going to start slowing us down here. Going to do the softest landing for the first ever Kerbal mark on the moon. And Jebediah is getting excited now. He understands what an achievement this will be for Kerbin history. Even if he doesn't come back home, it'll still be an achievement on his three-leg tripod lander that has almost no fuel left, so there's no coming back home. Only a few feet away from the achievement. One foot, half a foot, actually pretty far. And, oh, did a little bit of a noob hop there, and we're coming back down. And yes, we have landed for the first time ever on Mooner soil. Wait, is it Mooner or is it... I think it's Mooner. So, I don't even know why I'm collecting science, because... 
well, we're not gonna be able to come back, so I think that I might be able to like beam something back home to get the contract over with, but we don't have enough electric charge. I don't even know why I tried to do this anyway. That was a pretty dumb idea. However, we got 22,000 funds for landing on here, even with bringing no science back. And I'm pretty sure this rocket is less than 22,000 to launch, so we profited, and we have a little bit more science from a few contracts. So we're pretty much on a good track here. And Jebediah is just going to get back in his capsule before he has to die. You see this you see this is what happens when you volunteer to be part of a growing space program. You end up stranded on the moon. He can just be glad that I didn't try to send him to Eve. Jebediah knows he can't come back home, but he tries to lift off lift off anyway, and is a complete failure. So I have to come back. The mission control is verifying the fact that he cannot come back home, so they're gonna pull the trigger on terminating him. Jebediah is dead. The Space Center is now very sad. That is, until they see that Jebediah's uh, moon landing achievement unlocked them a contract from good old Rockomax. And they want to test out one of their engines, and they're going to pay a huge price for us to fly them, the engine up to a high height and test it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build this abomination here and launch it up with solid rocket boosters, cheapest one I could uh, make, and hopefully run a test up way up high and get some uh, funds. Oh, and look who's back. I don't know if that's a glitch or anything, but Jebediah Kerman appears to be back, and he will be piloting again. Long live Jebediah. So, we're launching up here with a slow accelerating solid rocket booster. I put a thrust limiter on it so that it can um, be more efficient, because we really need to get up to 90,000 meters. We're just going to do a straight up burn and lift this heavy engine all the way up into space. And you know how I wanted to get a new tracking station and vehicle assembly building? I think we can actually get both and one other building upgraded with the amount of funds that they are giving us for this. Yeah, they're being very generous here. They just want to test out their new engine, and I am glad to fly them up there and test because I need those funds. So we're just getting up here, just kind of biding our time, um, waiting for the 90,000 meter marks so we can run the test. If you want to know how to do these kind of contracts, you just kind of right-click on the thing and run the test. It's pretty self-explanatory. But there it is. All that moolah is now in our bank account. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna cut out the landing here. But we got down and parachuted basically and recovered. So we're gonna do a nice few upgrades. We got the um, this building here. I'm gonna try to use all that reputation we just got to further advance our fund income. And I guess we're locked at 25%, so I'll have to just put it there. See, I'm kind of tight on funds, as you well, you know. So I'm going to uh, adopt a new policy. Well, that was the Civ 5 thing there, but yeah. Turn reputation into funds using the administration building. And now we're just going to do some upgrades, actually. So upgrade that. Upgrade the vehicle assembly building and look at that new space center. And the space center doesn't just look prettier now. Now we can have a bigger rocket. Well, bigger in well, bigger in round of parts. It's not really that much bigger, but it'll still get us places. And it is very triangular, as you can see. It has um, how many is that? Se er, six engines on the bottom of it, powering it into the sky. However, it is significantly slower than my previous rocket designs, but it is very efficient. As you can see, it's getting up pretty high on the first stage. Pretty high considering that um, that lander up there is pretty heavy. It has um, four outline engines to help it propel itself to the moon and land on the moon. Instead of just one engine to get there and back, because that didn't work last time, it didn't have enough fuel. The second stage, however, is a lot more powerful than the first stage. It's not going to get us as far, it's going to get us into orbit though. Fast, which I need, considering we need to ex escape the atmosphere fast, to get the most efficiency out of the top stage. 
because we have orbital engines and those don't work that well in the atmosphere and they're not powerful at all. In the short term, I mean. In the long term, yeah, because in space you have a lot of time. If you're in orbit, well, you actually have an infinite amount of time, basically, unless you um, have a periapse that is intersecting the atmosphere. And as you can see here, that upgrade we made gave us maneuver nodes. Basically, you right-click the orbit, you click Add a Maneuver Node, and then you pull on Prograde, Retrograde, Inclination, or... Um, I, forget, I forget what the blue one is, but I know it makes you go up and down in comparison to your orbit. So this will make it much easier to get places because it shows the amount of delta V you need on the right there. And it gives you a little um, blue uh, pointer node, which you can aim at and burn that way to complete your maneuver. Basically, I am going to look at the amount of time it needs. It's at about 50 seconds, so I'm going to start uh, 25 seconds before it so that I can burn 25 seconds before and after to make it as even as possible. And there's, you see, perfect intersection. We're going to get really low. Actually, we're going to intersect the moon there. And we're just going to make a short um, course correction here. I'm going to actually make another maneuver node and get that blue one. I keep forgetting what it's called. I'll have to look that up later. But I'm going to make it so that I can land on the light side. This lander has a high thrust to weight ratio, so um, I don't need to get in orbit first. I, I'm confident of going from a normal inter or flyby orbit and just crashing right into the surface. And I think that we'll be able to slow down fast enough. Yeah, well, we're slowing down fast enough right there. Let's see, and basically we're gonna get down here and land the same way as last time, but just with this wider lander. If you notice there, the middle engine is not firing. That's because the outline engines are taking care of the landing, and I will decouple the radial fuel tanks and engines on the way up and use the middle one to get home and slow down for landing. And the reincarnation of Jebediah is just going to touch down. He is going to uh, get a crew report, and we are going to forget that... um. We don't have any comms devices, but he's going to EVA anyway. Yeah, I usually forget something. It's usually landing gear, solar panels, or comms devices. They're just so hard to remember. And see, I don't even have Mystery Goo, but I didn't want to take them with me. I thought I might not have enough Delta V to get there, and I don't know what that was. That was kind of a glitch, but he seems okay. The rocket looks okay, too, so it's all good. And this is all post-commentary, of course, and I'm just looking at this recording, and I'm like, why didn't I plant the flag? And I'm kind of hitting myself over the head for this because that's usually the first thing I would do. But I guess I'll have to do that next time we come to the moon. Maybe we can find a contract for that, actually. But for any of you guys watching, sorry I didn't plant the flag today. I completely forgot about it. So anyway, we're coming up on the end of our journey here. We're going to head on back, going to start burning and go in this direction to get into a little bit of an orbital maneuver. I think that we're going to skip over all this because it was kind of a slow process getting in to the correct spot to exit orbit because we want to exit on the inner part of the orbit so that we can burn the opposite direction the moon's going so that we can get some retrograde velocity in comparison to Kerbin to come back. So we're just going to skip over this here and here we are burning our way back. You can see that we're burning sideways we are going to get our um, thing down and here we are back at curve and sped up a little bit there and this is actually a really bad re-entry in real life but we're here anyway so we're almost there so we're coming up on the end here trying to do like a little rocket power landing oh, I was just having a little bit of fun but we're just gonna parachute down anyway and since we are at the end um, if you enjoyed this Please rate. Well, if you didn't enjoy this, you can dislike it. I don't really care. Um, but if you do like this a lot, you can subscribe. Maybe add it to your favorites or something. I don't know, leave a comment and say how I'm doing or how you like the video or dislike it. And we'll be back sometime, probably like two or three days. I don't know, I'm really enjoying this game, so I want to record more. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my video. I am PVM Vertigo. 
This is Kerbal Space Program. We flew to the moon and back today and made a lot of money, and I think it was a success. See you next time. Peace out.